thing you want to see. Oh, is he amazing? Morales says this is a fight between Beauty and the Beast. If it is, this may not be the game to want to be the Beauty when you're fighting the Beast. And if Zaragoza's experience and pedigree weren't formidable enough, his trainer, Nacho Bernstein, has trained 11 world champions, has three of them right now, including Zaragoza and including Ricardo Lopez, who is at this moment the greatest of all Mexican fighters, the strawweight champion who's 46 0 with 35 knockouts. Zaragoza, 55 wins, 7 losses, 3 draws, 27 KOs. He insists if he loses tonight, he retires. Retirement is a constant topic of conversation at every Zaragoza fight. I think he's been inspired by his own talk of retirement because he doesn't want to. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated in association with Lester Bedford Promotions and DMP Productions along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, Executive Director Tommy V. Smith, Boxing Coordinator Dickie Cole, Deputy Executive Director in Attendance Henry Molina, along with the World Boxing Council President Jose Suleiman, WBC Supervisor at Ringside, Hector Garcia, the three physicians in attendance at Ringside, Dr. Paul Rivera, Dr. Ricardo Igure and Dr. Ray Ibera. The timekeeper is Slim Delgado and counting for the knockdown seconds, Mark Ortega. Your three judges at ringside scoring this bout on a 10-point must system are Tommy Kazmarek, Bob Logiste, and Terry Smith. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Lawrence Cole. And now, for the thousands in attendance, and the millions watching around the world. From El Paso, Texas, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing her, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, trimmed with black letters, and weighing in at 121 and one quarter pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 26 consecutive victories with 20 knockouts. From Tijuana, Mexico, here is the WBC number one ranked super bantamweight challenger in the world, Terrible Eric His opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing green, trimmed with gold, and weighing an even 122 pounds. His professional record stands at 55 victories, 27 by knockout, with seven defeats and three draws. And he has captured three world titles. Presenting the three time world champion and reigning WBC Super Bantamweight Champion of the World. Damas y caballeros de Ciudad México, Daniel Zaragoza. Hey, hey, come here, quickly. Daniel, Daniel, come here, Daniel. Okay, play Olympia y buena suerte. That's all the Spanish I know, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Morales has not impressed everyone as a prize fighter, but every time he moves up in class, he moves his game up. If he moves it up again tonight, he will sustain himself as a champion. 
And you heard referee Lawrence Cole's admission. That's all the Spanish I know, baby. Cole has been advised by the Texas State Athletic Commission tonight to use only four words to communicate to the boxers. Box, break, stop, and time. Each of the two boxers has been schooled to understand those four English words tonight because neither uses English in everyday conversation. Box, break, stop, and time. Morales for a guy who said he wanted to go at Zaragoza savagely in the opening round. Comes out a little bit languid, dancing from side to side and not throwing punches as the southpaw Zaragoza looks for ways to land his jab. And part of the reason why he's not throwing punches is because Zaragoza always fakes as though he's coming with this big bomb. And it keeps the other guys on defense so much until they can't come at him like they want to. He gives that little head dip, and it seems as though he's going to throw an overhand left like he did right there, and they have to respect that. Oh, that was a there he lands. Look. Yep, now he'll have to respect it, that's for <laughs> sure. Zaragoza ducking, ducking the straight right, landing a little pawing right. Doesn't do a lot of damage with his punches, he just puts the gloves on you over and over and over. Because the best defense, like we said earlier tonight, is offense. Now Morales starts to find Zaragoza. Nailed him with a right hand as Zaragoza was coming in. Morales seems determined to try to establish his left jab. He may have trouble doing that against the southpaw. You have to call that left hand is right there. And Daniel has already established his right jab. There's that overhand left again. Incidentally, there is no air conditioning in this arena. And in a moment or two, we'll try to get a look at a ringside thermometer and figure out exactly what are the conditions under which the fighters are working right now. Not good. Not good at all. <laughs> things you notice, Roy, is that when Zaragoza punches, Morales backs off. He doesn't fire right back. No, I think he's trying to let Zaragoza wear himself down a little bit. But from what we've seen of Zaragoza, that won't be happening anytime soon. Well, it may happen in the 11th round when he's ahead 8-2. to two. Zaragoza with a winging, seeing eye left over the top. And Morales blocking some shots with his gloves, but it's been a Largely inactive round for 21-year-old Eric Morales, and Zaragoza landed one big left-hand shot. Temperature 90 degrees at ringside. You get under the lights in the middle of the ring, and I would about say it's a little bit more than that. And as we go to both corners, where Spanish is the predominant language, our interpreter is Ray Torres. Okay, you need to keep your hands up until you get the distance that you need. When you come out, you make sure you don't have your hands down because he's going to counter you with the right hand. Close your eyes. Let's get some Vaseline on you. Everything is okay. You need to be real alive. He's, a, he's an amateur. He's really an amateur. He doesn't have too much respect for you. Let's go, Eric. It's a championship fight. Zaragoza looks like he's got a 29-year-old body and a 49-year-old head, <laughs> which, is, which is why he's 39. Morales landed his most solid jab of the bout, and there's another one. He begins to pump the jab with a little bit more purpose. Now by establishing that jab first, he gets out in front of Daniel. There it goes, and it's easier for him to hit Daniel. But as soon as he has the lack in his action, Daniel there it goes to come right back and starts faking at him, and he gets in front of the action. Morales able to release only 34 punches in the first round as he was handed it against Zaragoza's curious style. Seems determined to be a little bit more aggressive in this round and seems more relaxed as well. And he fought a smart round. He didn't take a lot of big chances. He stayed sharp, and that would be the main thing for him tonight, I think. Good shot by Zaragoza. Zaragoza raking Morales with that awkward left-hand shot over the top. 
He throws punches from weird angles and lands sometimes when you don't think it's possible. <laughs> He's done that now three or four times, Roy, so I suspect that they just saw something in the tapes and he tends to drop his right hand around. Yeah, he's giving him a little head fake like he's going to the body with the left hand. Is there, Bosa? When he drops that hand a little bit, he comes over the top. Zaragoza fans who will tell you that the fight hasn't begun until he's bleeding. He claims that in two fights against Paul Banky, he sustained double figures worth of cuts. They don't bother him much. No, they don't bother him at all. In fact, I think they motivate him. He had 15 cuts in one fight with Banky. Again, that looping left hand over the top landed flush on the right cheek of Eric Morales. It doesn't seem to be bothering Morales at all, though. He's very focused in on what he wants. But it's scoring. Yes, yeah, scoring, but he's concentrating. He's best, a younger fighter. Best right hand of the early going for Morales. Zaragoza may have been hamming it up a little bit as he bounced back into the ropes. We asked Zaragoza if he thought that Morales was as good a fighter as Wayne McCullough. And he said, no way. I think the reason he probably said that is because Wayne McCullough is one of the busiest fighters of our decade. Yep, between them, McCullough and Zaragoza threw more than 2,200 punches in their 12 rounds in Boston. And that is a bunch of punches. Fifth highest number <laughs> of all time recorded by CompuBox. Two rounds in the books. Scheduled 12, Daniel Zaragoza and Derek Morales. Okay, we have a contra golpe. Let's, let's do some counter punching, Eric. You need to work that right hand. You got to keep it, trying to punch him in the in the body. That's all the is a good spot for you. When, when he's going to the right, step back and step, and then hit him. When, when you're in close, make sure you punch. Throw punches. Make sure you, you're alert and let's go in there. Not a very busy round for either fighter. They threw a total of 69 punches between them. Morales would like to be throwing that many in one round. He's keeping his composure good. He's not letting Daniel erupt his style at all. He's doing exactly what he wants to do, and that's good to see in a young fighter like Morales. Now, with the exception of a few looping punches over the top, Morales hasn't had many problems against Zaragoza. But he hasn't scored much himself. Finally, he blocked that overhand left. Zaragoza pushing to the body. Morales lands the straight right hand. Zaragoza with a clean shot. The right hand to the body. And Morales just misses with a winging right hand inside. Morales has had some success in previous fights. Switching to a southpaw stance. So you wonder if he might try it here. I don't, think, I don't think it's smart to switch against a southpaw when you're fighting a turn southpaw when you're fighting another southpaw. Especially one that is as cagey as uh, Zaragoza is. Maybe later in the tire a little. So you don't expect to see uh, De La Hoya try that against Camacho the way he did against Cornell Whitaker? 
Maybe later in the fight, once he figures out where Camacho is coming from, he might try it. But Camacho is a lot quicker than he was in those days. He's more focused on what he's doing. And I don't think it will be smart for De La Hoya to do that either. Right hand inside by Morales as Zaragoza was coming in. Zaragoza with some wild shots, and he landed both over and under. But he's keeping the other guy on the defense, Zaragoza is. As long as you keep the other guy defending, you're going to hit him soon. Zaragoza able to keep his eyes open inside and wait for that opportunity with the left hand over the top. There goes to take such a big step with that right foot when he comes in. It seems as though someone should be able to catch him, but for some reason, they can't see the counter. Morales caught him with a straight left hand there and followed with a second straight left hand and throws Zaragoza back into the ropes. Yes, but he answers like a champion. And if you were with us at the beginning of the evening, in our opening, you met 21-year-old Vanessa Duran from right here in El Paso, pre-med student at the University of Texas at El Paso, who moonlights from time to time as a round card girl. Well, there's a few people here with heat stroke. Maybe she could minister to us. No treatment will be refused from Vanessa. Here's Morales, who has been very patient, very disciplined, landing some jabs like that. Comes across with a couple of more to finish the round. You wonder if that late barrage could have stolen the round for him. In round three, Morales landed 13 of 21 jabs. He is stepping up the pace with the stick and largely controlling the fight with it in the second and third round. By copy box count through three rounds, Morales is out, landed Zaragoza 51 to 35. Definitely Morales is the more economical of the two fighters. But this is Daniel Zaragoza's fight. He comes out, he outpunches his opponent, and he keeps the pressure on. A lot of times the judges will give their fight or give the round to the guy that's most busy. Zaragoza has thrown a few more punches than Morales, but his punch output went down dramatically in the second round and didn't come all that far back up in the third. So both guys have been a little bit tentative as they search for opportunities against each other. It's interesting that if anyone really goes on the attack and, and takes chances, it's usually Zaragoza, the old guy. Great left hand lands for Morales. Zaragoza lunging and reaching and looking for another opportunity to get to Morales' body. Morales now successfully staying away from that looping left hand over the top and landing his own straight right. Most young fighters also nowadays are learning that you don't have to go in and take all the risks. If you can outbox a guy, stay outside and outbox him. And that's kind of what he's doing to Zaragoza right now. But he has to make sure that he doesn't let Zaragoza outwork him. So much about Zaragoza though is that he's always on the attack. Never gives the guy a chance to set him up with too much because he always has the guy thinking about what it is that he's about to do. Right hand over the top by Zaragoza speaks for itself. Morales well, looked like he just staggered momentarily. Looked more surprised than physically stunned, but Zaragoza has changed the fight with that one right-hand sweep. That's what happens when you let a guy constantly punch at you and you don't punch back. He's going to catch you sooner or later. Zaragoza lands another right-hand inside. Totally 
seizing the initiative away from Eric Morales in the closing seconds of the fourth round. And Morales tries to answer back like a champion. That's the way guys are supposed to fight. These are two champions. He, he, he surprised, he surprised you with that punch. You got to change the, the punches on him. Don't be running and don't step back that way. He's tired. Now you got to throw combinations to get in there. Take a look and see how Zaragoza is stunned. Rallies for a moment with an overhand right. He has been throwing overhand lefts. This time it was the right that did the damage. He's an amazing old guy. You would think that he'd use his slick and awkward southpaw style just to score points. But if you back off from him, he'll go right after you. Yes, he will. That wild loaded right hand over the top. They don't teach that punch in the gym, Roy. They don't teach that, punch, that looping left hand that he's been using earlier in the fight. Har Harold, how you, Harold Letterman, how do you have it after four Larry, rounds? Two rounds apiece. 38-38. I get the first round to Zaragoza. And certainly Daniel deserved that fourth round on the, on the basis of that overhand right. Eric Morales fights a beautifully controlled fight for rounds two and three. He'd wait for the Zaragoza lunge and he'd pop him with a jab when Zaragoza would come lunging in. But certainly Zaragoza pulled out the fourth round to even this up. I don't guess they teach much of anything that Zaragoza does. <laughs> no, what it's called, Jim, is he's, he's adapting to the situation. Whatever he sees that he thinks will work, he changes and he does that. That's what distinguishes great fighters from good fighters. Most great fighters can adapt to the situation, make something happen right there on the spot without having to work on it or be taught that specific move. He's schooled in the fundamentals well enough that he can stray from the fundamentals when he sees the opportunity. <laughs> he doesn't really stick to the fundamentals too much off normally. <laughs> nope. I mean, he's off balance after his big punches. He doesn't care. He seems like he's always falling to the left, but it never seems to have an effect on him. He's also a master at convincing the judges he's winning the fight. And he knows how to style his body language to make it look as though he's even more in control than might normally be the case. Oh, Hard right, right hand over the... But Morales answered back that time with two good shots. Well, you heard Morales' dad telling him between rounds in the corner that he could not let Zaragoza get away with shots like that. Daniel's doing it again here. Turns Morales' head with a looping left. Low blow by Zaragoza. Referee Lawrence told him to see it. That was a good right up cut by uh, Morales then, too. When, when Zaragoza came in. Suddenly there's a breath of cool air here at ringside. They found a fan for us. Oh, my goodness. I don't believe it. This could change the whole evening. <laughs> for, for us, if not the fighters. Zaragoza, Morales has to back out. He had chased Daniel into a corner, but it was Daniel who found the shot. And Daniel landed a very good body shot then on Morales, and I think it took a lot out of Morales. Morales is starting to show a little wear and tear now. Zaragoza doesn't look exactly fresh as a daisy, but... Yeah, but this is Daniel Zaragoza, remember? But, that's right. <laughs> but Jim, that's how he looks when he wakes up in the morning. Con mucha oportunidad, fíjate. Escucha lo que te... La balsa. Escucha lo que te voy a decir. Listen to what I'm going to say in Zaragoza. Está esperando que tire ese ataque. You're waiting for him to, to throw, and then you count the You need to take advantage of everything. Se cuenta ese detalle, entonces espera las la, la respuestas. Espera las respuestas para que ondees el cuerpo y evites ese ataque. Make sure you throw it to the body, and so you can avoid his lunges. Sigue buscando la oportunidad, así, peleando. Tienes que trabajarlo. Ahorita trabaja en un round, así. Hey, you, you need to get closer to this guy. You need to fight him at least one round up close. He's throwing those uh, wild punches. You got to be up close so he doesn't hit you. 
No le den la distancia. Don't let him get the distance on you. Keep, up, keep him up there. Be close to him. Great job by interpreter Ray Torres. He works the night shift, too. We go to round six on Boxing After Dark. Daniel Zaragoza in the green trunks against Eric Morales in the white. Zaragoza's 39. Morales is 21. They're fighting for Zaragoza's 122-pound title. Morales was about three when Zaragoza turned pro. Morales landing inside. barrage of punches in close by Eric Morales, who has some counter-punching ability of his own, Roy. Some very good counter-punching ability. Following the instructions of his corner to go to Zaragoza and take him on. And now Zaragoza trying to seize the initiative back. He's about to take a clean shot at Morales' body, and Lawrence Cole stepped in and broke him up. One thing I see Morales doing that is not good for a young fighter is he's fighting an old veteran and he's looking for the referee to help get him off of him. He has to stand up and be a man and be the champion and get him off of him. And push him on. Head butt. Head head butt. And there will be blood on Zaragoza, I believe. Maybe a tiny cut above the left eyebrow, maybe not. And yeah, there may be something way up above the brow, yeah. A scratch doesn't look like it's dangerous at this point. So now the fight is officially underway for Zaragoza. Stop! Goodbye. No, 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 break. He's finally bleeding. Another good example of what Roy was talking about is Morales waited there for referee Lawrence Cole to pull Zaragoza off of it. And here we go again. Right now the fight is slow, but Daniel is doing all the inside punching. This is how he wins rounds. Before you know it, he'll be up eight rounds or two, like Larry said, and he'll be winning the fight. Yes, and, and Morales will say tomorrow, if that's the case, that the judges gave too much credit to Zaragoza, but their referee Roy Cole, I mean, uh, Lawrence Cole, warning, warning Zaragoza against holding and hitting, I believe. Actually, I think he's hitting on the break. Oh, that was a body shot that hurt Morales. That body shot hurt Morales bad, and Zaragoza knows it. And you can see Morales failing to throw punches now as Zaragoza bull rushes it. Yeah, because those body shots are weakening him. Body shots take a lot out of a fighter, and this is what is happening to Eric right now. Halfway through a scheduled 12, and as the second stick away in round six, Morales is trying to stay away from Daniel Zaragoza, and then he landed one hard counter right to change the fight one more time. This is a boxing after dog fight. It sure is. <laughs> I'm going to put something on it. Who called that guy? You see, as Morales has decided to go at Zaragoza, they collide. to Zaragoza, which he rightfully ignores. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you're right, Roy. I think that warning was for hitting on the break. Yeah, because uh, the, the young guy is waiting on the referee to come and get him, and Daniel wants to continue fighting. He believes in fight to the referee gets there to separate you. Harold, do you think that a point should have been deducted for the headbutt? It, it, it's very hairy. Let me explain the rule, Jim. In the WBC, they take the point from the uncut fighter on an accidental headbutt. In, in that instance, you saw Daniel Zaragoza cut on his forehead by an accidental headbutt. I asked Lawrence Cole about point deduction. He said no cut occurred, and he didn't deduct any points, even though there was an accidental headbutt. Uh, head 
and you did see a cut on Zaragoza's forehead. Tiny so, cut. More exactly, like a blood blister Exactly. It was a very gray area. I go Lawrence cold. Cole elected not to take the point. Yeah, I think he made the right call, Harold. I think so also. Hey! So why are we talking about it so much? <laughs> seems to be catching a second win now. He's taking a jab again. And Daniel seems to be taking a breather. Round seven, a little bit slower than his predecessor. Round six was a whirlwind. Both guys doing some damage. There's that looping left hand for Zaragoza. And there's a straight left hand shot for Eric Morales as he stepped in. He's defi definitely a lot quicker than Zaragoza. If he can use his quickness and outsmart Zaragoza, it seems as though he can outbox him. But the one thing he's not doing is, once he lands that quick jab, he's staying right there. And that allows Daniel to answer with his own punches. Well, so frequently, Zaragoza will land those looping punches to travel long distances, and you wonder, how could the guy not get away from that? But he does it with uncanny regularity. Well, he steps in so far that when they think they're out of the, ra the way, they're right in the range of that long, slow punch. It seems like it should be there already, but it's just now getting there when they get what they think they're out of the way. So it's the uh, deceiving first step that does it for him. Right. It's kind of like I fooled Griffin. I fooled him like I was going to throw this quick left hook, but it was actually a delayed left uppercut, and he was out of range for the left hook, but the left hook was, was not what I was throwing. I got you. You think the punch is over already, and then it says hello. <laughs> <laughs> Except in Griffin's case, it said hello and goodbye. Good night. Round seven of the schedule, 12. Daniel Zaragoza lands a straight left hand, which is the biggest punch of this particular round. Able to counter with the left when Eric Morales releases the right. Seven rounds, your score. Larry, 67, 66, four rounds to three. Eric El Tarifa Morales. I thought this kid is boxing a very nice fight in round six and seven to forge ahead. He waits for Morales to rush him. He waits for he would probably he waits for Zaragoza to rush him. He waits for Zaragoza to lunge in, and then he picks him off with that left jab. Bing, bing, bing. That constant left jab to Zaragoza's face is what's winning this fight for Eric Morales. He's boxing a very controlled fight. I think. He's in control at this point. Well, I gave the last round Zaragoza, who landed four or five clean left hooks, okay, which I it. thought added up to a lot more than those jabs from Morales. I have it four rounds to three for Zaragoza. Hard fight to score, Harold. Would you be surprised to see a wide disparity among the scorecards here? No, no, not at all, Jim. It's an easy fight to score. I think these rounds are pretty decisive, but it is a close fight at this point. Round eight begins. You saw the uncanny number for Zaragoza landing single figures in jabs, having thrown nearly 150 of them in the first seven rounds of the bout. But obviously, he's just using it to set up those wild, looping punches which have done the damage for him. Mor Morales seems to be getting a little stronger now. And if he is, then this is bad news for Zaragoza because he's already faster than Zaragoza. And if he tightens up on his punches and stays set, he can kiss Zaragoza with a lot of counter. Could Morales do a better job of getting to Zaragoza's body? He had said that he planned to do that, but I haven't seen enough. No, because he's standing so straight up. Anytime Zaragoza comes in, he straightens right up, and you can't hit a man's body from where he's standing. He has to get his head a little loyal to throw at Zaragoza's body. Tactical error, or you like what he's doing? Well, I like what he's doing, but I think that after he lands a punch, he should use his feet to get out of the way of the rushing Daniel. Daniel's coming straight ahead. He knows when Daniel is coming. So after you count him, move out the way. Don't let him hit you back. If he used his feet better, could he set up a left hook to the body? He can set up a left hook to the body, a right hand to the body, and he can definitely catch him with a straight right after he lands with that big punch right there. the looping right hand over the top after Morales had relaxed in the clinch. It doesn't bother Morales. Well, let's face it, Zaragoza doesn't have a ton of punching power. <laughs> Neither does Morales, let's face it. 
And Zaragoza doesn't stop coming. Morales is throwing some very good punches at, at Zaragoza, and Zaragoza constantly is on the attack. Hard right hand off the one-two by Morales. Zaragoza's chin there. That's what I'm talking about. This kid still has a load of power, and this is not going to be good for Dan. And Zaragoza with a legendary beard, but in serious trouble here. Let's see if Morales can finish. And here comes Zaragoza right at him. Zaragoza, one of the great survivors in modern ring history, comes back immediately. Bleeding over the left side. Morales landing the right hand at will. Zaragoza looks about 69 right now. I think he's finished. I don't think he's going to make it out of the round. Morales target practice but can't find the bullseye. And now here comes Daniel Zaragoza. 39 years old, chasing his opponent across the ring. Amazing recuperation by Zaragoza. He's going to get out of the eight. Break. Turn. Boxing after dark. He doesn't get in the gun in this dude. Zaragoza. Zaragoza, don't fight him that way. You're, you're trying to take too many punches. Yeah, when, he, when he comes at you like that, counter him. You gotta control yourself. Morales went on the attack. And here is Morales as part of the round. And Zaragoza tried to let him punch himself out on the rope. How much did Morales take out of Zaragoza in the eighth? He landed 36 of 52 power shots. And you heard Harold Letterman talking about how it's a close fight. Many times a close fight is decided when one guy gets a 10-8 round. And that almost had to be a 10-8 round for Morales. Shot at Daniel Dion, too. That was very small. Aragosa lands a straight right hand and comes back to the body. It's going to be a war to the finish here. Now Morales is getting low like he should in order to throw the body shot. A music group called the Survivors or something. There the soul goes, Survivors. Yeah, the Soul Survivors. There goes it should have been the mascot. Like expressway to your heart. <laughs> it's before you were born, Roy. It must have been in Daniel's time. Oh, it was definitely in Daniel's time. <laughs> he was almost a pro before you were born. You hear the crowd chanting for Zaragoza, Zaragoza. One thing Zaragoza got away from is he isn't hitting uh, Morales' body anymore like he was. Oh, low blow. Subak! Subak! Bust! No! Bust! Well, he could 
given Morales time to recover from that one, but he said box and they came back in. Wasn't too hard of a shot, I don't think. I guess Eric was okay. He didn't seem to protest. So much concentration at this moment as both guys try to avoid the other's onslaught. I think both guys are a little weary on right now. Yeah. Temporarily punched out. I think we're going to see some more action in round 10, though. I know we are. Don't stop now. Okay, you got him now. You got to put your keys in there. You got to take it to him. You better do it now. Do it now. You'll be surprised later. Here's Morales as he stung Zaragoza with two right hands. Fighting a, a tremendously experienced fighter. He is showing some real nice poise. This 21-year-old son of a former professional fighter. You can see him here relaxing. He's taking some punishment. But he knows that he can deal with anything that Zaragoza is dealing out with. Eric Morales says that he thinks in Zaragoza's recent fights, particularly against Wayne McCullough, that he got too much credit from the judges in the late rounds and that he doesn't land effective punches at this stage of the battle. Zaragoza said, I'll show him. Now Zaragoza is going back to the body like he should have been in the last two rounds. Too late? Maybe. And now Morales is fighting on the inside like a man he has to be. Neither man was able to land much to the body in the early rounds when it might have accrued a lot of damage. But both have been getting their shots in since the middle rounds of the fight. Zaragoza seems to be very, very tired at this point. Zaragoza insisting before the fight that if he loses tonight, he will in fact finally retire. Not everyone around him believes that. Oh, that right, was a shot good body shot. Yes, yep. that was a good body shot. Right hand over the top for Morales. Not much steam in that punch. And remember, he had taken that hard body shot just moments before. Zaragoza cut over the left eye, cut under the left eyebrow, cut under the left eye, but unbothered by all of that. He looks like he may be just a little bit more tired and a little slower than he did in the fight against Wayne McCullough at this point. Maybe that age is starting to show up just a little. Well, he was more commanding against McCullough, and I think Morales has landed harder punches against him. Yeah, Mc Morales is definitely a stronger puncher than McCullough. McCullough landed a bunch, but not as much heavy artillery as Morales has been able to put in. And that heavy artillery will definitely take it out of him. But Daniel is still fighting like a game he used to. Oh, good right hand. Another right hand, and Morales is tattooing Zaragoza. He elects to go down and take a knee. A body shot made him make that decision. And if this becomes another 10-8 round, it would be awfully tough for Daniel Zaragoza to win a decision in this fight. Well, Zaragoza knows he has to try to make a big statement in the closing seconds of the 10th to avoid another 10-8 round on the scorecard. Uh, this is a 10-8 round, Jim, because he went down clearly. This is automatically a 10-8 round. And deservedly so, as Morales pounds away. Huge effort by the 21-year-old, and Zaragoza slaps his glove in congratulations. Again, throwing the body, you did well. The fight is yours, the fight is yours. You gotta throw with with, with a whole of heart. Otra vez. 
Watch as Morales now showing youth, patience, the body punch, that right hand made Zaragoza take an account. That was a well-chosen body shot by Morales. And you heard assistant trainer Miguel Diaz going at Morales in the corner between rounds, challenging him. It's your fight. Don't let it out of your control. Well, Zaragoza said El Paso is a good town to die in, meaning to end his career. We'll see whether, whether he can breathe some life into himself in the last two rounds. Long night in a border town for the man who has spent his career fighting all over the world. These are going to be two of the longest rounds of his career. Twenty-second title fight for Daniel Zaragoza. He's seen it all and then some. He'll need a miracle in the last couple of rounds. It now appears to avert defeat at the hands of young Eric Morales. Oh, well, another body shot that hurt him bad. The body shots have been ripping Zaragoza apart these last couple of rounds, but the courage stays intact. The heart is still there. Yeah, he wants to go out like a champion. Huevos in this fight. No knockdown, says go. Most of the crowd pulling for the Zaragoza comeback. Another hard right hand uppercut by Eric Morales. That punch has been getting Catania all night. From about the seventh round on, Virtually every uppercut seems to have landed, and a lot of them with authority. Eric Morales very calm as he closes in on the biggest victory of his professional career. 26-0 is the young man whose father didn't want him to follow in his footsteps and become a pro fighter. You can't get careless here, though. Whatever a fighter had the presence to play possum, it might be Zaragoza. But he is hurting badly from the body punishment and the uppercuts in these past couple of rounds. Yes, he is. But I don't even think Zaragoza can hurt Morales because when he hit him with his good shots early in the fight, it had no effect on Morales. That's true. We'll find out if he keeps <laughs> landing like that. Morales has fought a very intelligent fight tonight. Oh! Great right hand to the body. This really isn't the sad death of a king so much as the passing of the torch to a new generation. totally unable to handle the body shots of Eric Morales and Morales once he found a way to Zaragoza's ribcage in the 10th and 11th rounds was able to put the fight away yes he was and that was a superb performance by a young very very smart fighter how would you rate Morales against the likes of Junior Jones and Barrera well, I think he needs a little bit more experience to fight a fighter such as Junior Jones. Junior Jones right now is the best super bantamweight out right now. He's very strong, he's fast, he's experienced, and he's the type of guy that you can't make mistakes and get caught with the big shots early. What about Marco Antonio Barrera, beaten twice by Junior Jones, but that, invincible against other fighters? That would be a good fight for Morales. A very good fight for Morales. I doubt seriously that they'll take it. But there you see, it was a right hand again to the body, a vicious right hand. And here's an interesting thing, so was the greatest champion, the legend of all legends of, of Mexican fighters, uh, really is 
Ruben Olivares. And Ruben Olivares is one of the men in the corner of Morales who has taught him to body punch. Yep, he helped to inspire Morales for the fight and also worked technically with him to improve his attack to the body. And that, in the end, was the difference in the bout. That last straight right hand seemed to land right on the solar plexus. Let's go up to Michael Buffer now for the official particulars on Morales' championship Ladies victory. And referee Lawrence Cole calls a halt to the bout. Two minutes, 59 seconds of round number 11. The winner by knockout victory and new WBC Super Bantamweight champion of the world, Eric Morales. 259 of the 11th round, Zaragoza could not, incidentally, have been saved by the bell if the count had extended beyond it. First championship fight here in El Paso in more than seven years, and what a brilliant bout it was. How did you have it scored through 11, Harold? Jim, 96-92, six rounds to four, Eric Morales. He had a commanding four-point lead on my card going into the 11th. There was no way Zaragoza could win this fight unless he scored a knockout. And it was obvious to me he was in no position to score a knockout. So had it gone through the, through the uh, 12 rounds, in my mind, there was no doubt that Eric Morales would have won the fight. And now Larry Merchant stands by with the winner. Thank you, fellas. Eric, congratulations. You think your father will now let you be a prize fighter? <laughs> he thinks so. What won the fight for you tonight? Was it your youth? Were you being patient with him because you thought he would get tired in the later rounds? Yo creo que mi paciencia en estar aguantando tantos golpes contra golpeándolo y haciendo caso mi mezquino yo sabía que tarde temprano iba a acabar y además iba yo pienso que iba arriba en la pelea en los puntos and he always thought he was ahead on the card did he hurt you with any of those looping punches te hirió alguna vez te dolió con esas manos de volada que tiró no solo golpes que me dio en la parte de la cabeza pero pero en realidad los golpes que me dieron no, aunque pues no, 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 no pega realmente, es un pegador. He does, he's not a hard solo, puncher. Solo abrumar. Yeah, he, he, it looked look real hard, but it didn't hurt him because he's not really a, a good puncher. I mentioned on the air during the late rounds that you had credited Ruben Oliveras with helping you with the body punches. Eh, Was that the decisive factor for you tonight? Él mencionó lo, eh, que en los últimos rounds que iba eso, Olivares te, te estaba ayudando porque el hombre se cansaba. Eso fue la, la, los golpes a la barriga te ayudaron mucho. Yo creo que sí, los golpes es, es todo sabido, es sabido por todo el público, por toda la gente de, del ámbito boxístico y la gente que ve la televisión. Que Daniel Zaragoza en sus últimas peleas no ha aguantado en los golpes, los golpes al estómago, mucho menos en los últimos rounds. We knew because Zaragoza in the last few fights was getting, uh, getting weaker in the last round, and we figured if we go to the body, we would stop him. Thank you very much, and congratulations again. All right, Jim, back to you. All right, Larry, let's quickly take a look at a punch stat profile of what happened in the bout. CompuBox telling us that in total punches, Morales threw 40 more than Zaragoza. He landed 122 punches more than Zaragoza. Huge margin in connect percentage, and the overwhelming bulk of that margin came in power punches. Yet, nevertheless, going into the last two rounds, Zaragoza had a chance to win the fight on the scorecards. In fact, as you look at jabs in the bout, it's pretty stunning that Zaragoza, landing only 13 out of 185 jabs, was within a point on one of the three scorecards, was ahead by two points on the scorecard of veteran judge Tommy Kazmarek, and still had a chance, had he pulled out those last two rounds, to salvage the bout. Pretty stunning to this observer's eyes. Let's go back to Larry Merchant with the loser, Daniel Zaragoza. All right, thank you. Da Daniel, was he stronger than you suspected? No. Eh, más rápido. 
Much quicker. Much quicker than one of technicians. And good technician. And did you run out of gas at the end, and was that why he was able to hurt you to the body? Me alcanzó un poco más fácil. Desafortunadamente lo conecté muy bien por ahí del quinto round, cuarto round. He created que con un solo golpe podía acabar. Yeah, definitely. At the end, he, he, he got me real good. I was trying to weaken him and get him from the beginning, but I wasn't able to put him away early. ¿Y qué creen? Lo reté. Yeah. He challenged him. Is this the end of the road then, Daniel Zaragoza? Definitivamente sí. Definitivamente sí. Si hoy hoy me faltó un poco de pierna de brazo. Mañana me va a faltar un poco más de las dos. Today he needed the, the legs weren't there and the punch wasn't there. Tomorrow will be worse. I think this is it. You have certainly given your heart and your passion to this game for all of these years. Can you have nothing left after giving so much? Tú le has dado tanto a este esto en tu carrera, tu pasión, tu corazón, que esto te queda algo, ya no te queda nada. Algo de qué? De, de valor, de corazón, de energía. Ya tú crees que es el, ya esto tú figura que es lo último, ¿verdad? Con todo el respeto que ustedes me merecen, soy todo un hombre y me siento capaz, pero la lógica me me dice vete. Yeah, logic says to leave. He would love to stay because he's still a, a warrior. He still uh, can do go on, but it doesn't seem like uh, at his age it's as logic for him to leave now. Thank you for being you, Daniel. Tú, que fuiste un gran campeón. Gracias. Gracias al boxeo. Thanks to the boxing world. Jim.